What's good, everybody? It's your boy Todd Smith here, yet once again with another episode of the No Gimmicks Podcast. If you just got done checking out the TLC pay per view from WWE, you witnessed a pretty solid pay per view um, from the SmackDown brand. I can honestly say so far, the SmackDown brand definitely has shown improved as the better brand when it comes to uh, the pay per views lately. Uh, the first match of the evening took place with the Wyatts comprised of Randy Orton. Bray Wyatt and Luke Harper taking on Beauty and the Man Beast, the tag team comprised of Heat Slater and Rhino. Um, the good which came out of this match definitely had to have been the fact that the Wyatts win. The Wyatts win, they are the new SmackDown tag team champions. Um, glad to see them get the belts from around the waist of, um, of Heat and Rhino and finally get them on a tag team that I'm actually pretty interested in. It's kind of interesting to see how far this whole angle is going to go and how far Randy's actually going to pull this long con on these guys, because I honestly believe he has other intentions in mind. I think part of the intentions is for him to kind of build up some tension between Luke and, um, and Bray Wyatt and divide and conquer. Moving on to the bat of this match, the match was way too short. Not Bill Goldberg versus Brock Lesnar short, but just not enough. With all the build that Beauty and the Man and Beast has had, it seems like they would have let this match kind of go a little bit longer and almost let them get a little bit more offense in. Um, it just kind of seemed like, you know, before I knew it, it was over and done with. The ugly, I would have to say, not actually anything which took place within the uh, the confines of the ring, but what was up with that unnecessary remix of Randy Orton's theme music? It was kind of a mishmash of his old Legend Killer theme, the theme which he used most recently before, you know, prior to joining the Wyatts, and the Wyatts music. Yeah, that was completely unnecessary. WWE, go ahead and leave that one alone. On to the next match of the evening. We had Carmella taking on Nikki Bella in a no disqualification match. So the only good that I can really think of that came out of this match that I really just did not think was a very uh, solid effort out of either one of the two female competitors involved. Nikki had a very cool looking uh, spot where she kind of ran up. And she jumped up on the barricade and turned around and hit uh, Carmelo with a nice roundhouse kick. Um, the bad, I can honestly say I just did not buy into this match. I am not buying into this feud. Um, I could absolutely care less to, you know, whom actually attacked Nikki and took her out. It turns out that um, Carmelo revealed via a promo at the conclusion of the match that it was actually Natalia who did so. We'll just have to kind of, you know, see what happens here and how this develops. And if it turns out to really be her, if she's just kind of trying to get the heat off of herself. And then for the ugly, my goodness, that head scissors which Nikki delivered onto Carmella outside the ring, which sent her into the steps, that just looks awfully weak. Definitely one of the down points of the match of, like I said, what wasn't a very spectacular match to begin with in the first place. So now, in the next match here, we had Dolph Ziggler taking on The Miz for a ladder match for the IC title. Um, the good, really, there's not a whole lot of bad that I can truly say about this match. Hell of an effort out of both competitors. Great uses of psychology for this match. Um, I really like how they actually executed the uses of the ladder throughout the course of the match. We saw an elbow drop from a ladder which uh, Dolph actually balanced himself on and actually kind of bounced off of a few times before actually leaping to deliver the elbow drop. We saw a figure four that the Miz actually executed on Dolph through the ladder and of course that sick looking power bomb which, um, which Dolph took onto the ladder delivered by the Miz. Um, the bad of this match I would have to say, the continual mocking of Daniel Bryan by the Miz. I'm not really exactly sure what this is leading to here. Um, you know, as we know, Miz actually went over in this match, so he actually retained the Intercontinental title. So the next question I have is, what is next for Dolph Ziggler? What's going to be next for him here? You know, he recently, it was rumored that he was going to leave the WWE, and they surprised us all by putting the Intercontinental title on him. He dropped it very quickly, so I'm not sure which uh, feuds are coming up for him here in the near future. Um, the ugly, I would have to say, was definitely Miz getting DDT'd onto the ladder. Um, that was definitely one of the uglier spots of the match. And Dolph taking that knee drop onto the ladder, which uh, Miz kind of elevated him up and just dropped him um, knee first onto the ladder. That just looked very painful indeed. So this next match from the TLC pay-per-view, I can honestly say had to have been the surprise of the night. 
Um, this was a chairs match which featured Callisto taking on Baron Corbin. Um, the good from this had to have been a solid display of both talents' uh, skill sets. You know, we got to see some of the power and some of the strength of Baron Corbin against the speed and the agility of Callisto. Um, some of the unique spots included that seated drop kick that Callisto delivered on the Baron Corbin, who was literally sitting in a chair when he um, hit him with the drop kick. Also, that same time where Callisto launched himself from off the top rope, and he landed almost like a um, like a seated style type senton onto uh, Baron Corbin, cra sending him crashing through the two rows of chairs. It almost kind of looked like he was taking a dive off a diving board into a swimming pool, um, yelling, Cowabunga! Kind of like how the Ninja Turtles used to do back in the day. Um, the bad, I would say, from this has been the fact that Baron Corbin won. Um, you know, it's kind of been a little back and forth, you know, that they've had going between these two for the last couple months. Baron Corbin actually interfered in a match um, that Callisto had at the Survivor Series pay-per-view. I was kind of hoping that Callisto would go over here and um, kind of get some of that momentum back. But I kind of get the feeling that this is not the last match that we're going to see from these two. It's going to go on for a little bit longer. The ugly definitely had to have been the delivering of the deep sits. That's Baron Corbin's finisher, kind of similar to the uh, the black hole um, slam that Abyss uses over there in TNA, where he spun him around a few times and he just absolutely spiked Callisto onto the floor. And in another ugly spot that I could say that involved Callisto was when he jumped from off the top ropes and waiting for him was a steel chair that Baron Corbin drove right into his face. So yeah, so I mean, that's almost the equivalent of him driving a car about 100 miles per hour right into a brick wall. Not pretty stuff there. So in the next bout of the evening, we had two women competitors step into the square circle as Becky Lynch, the SmackDown Women's Champion, took on Alessa Bliss for the title in a tables match. Um, the good of this was a well-worked match between these two female um, talents here with an effective finish. However, I must say, the pace of this match was way too slow. There were at times where I was almost kind of beginning to fade and I almost thought I was going to go downstairs and brew myself a cup of coffee in order to get through this one. Yes, and then all of a sudden, bam. It's like they just picked up the pace, you know, got towards the finish of the match. She got driven to the table, that being uh, Becky Lynch, and it was over. Next thing we knew, we had a new women's champion on the SmackDown brand. Um, the ugly, I would have to say here... Alexa DDT Becky onto the bottom part of the table. Can't quite say I've ever seen that before. So yeah, lots of innovation, lots of uses and moves that I haven't um, seen on the certain weapons tonight during TLC. So I kind of give them some props for that. So now on to the final match of the evening for the WWE World Heavyweight title, which featured Dean Ambrose taking on AJ Styles, the, uh, the current champion on the SmackDown brand. Excellent execution of this type of match, I must say. When you have a match that's comprised of tables, ladders, and chairs, it's only fair that us, the viewers, get to see all three of them used in the most creative, violent ways possible. So some of the highlights include the elbow drop to the table that Dean actually delivered where he put a ladder on top of one of the announcer's tables and drove AJ through the, uh, one of the other tables outside, ringside there. Also, we saw a moonsault DDT that AJ hit onto the floor onto uh, Dean Ambrose. A 450 splash, awesome display of athleticism by AJ there from off the uh, the middle rope, or actually from off the top rope, where he actually catapulted himself outside and delivered a 450 splash on the Dean Ambrose who was laying on some tables outside. And then we got to see D Dirty Deeds delivered by Dean Ambrose onto the stairs on AJ Styles. Um, the bad here had to have been the fact not necessarily that AJ Styles retained, because I actually kind of wanted to see him go over in this match. It's how he retained. Out of nowhere comes Mr. James Ellsworth, who we had thought was actually sent out of action after AJ delivered that sick-looking um, Styles clash off the, uh, the stairs to the floor on him on SmackDown uh, Live about a week or so ago. So we thought he was completely out of commission, but he comes in. We're thinking he's going to assist Dean, but he actually assists AJ by pushing uh, Dean off the ladder from inside the ring onto two tables which were outside of the ring. Bit of a surprise there, I must say. So what's next for James Ellsworth? Is it going to be a heel turn, or is he going to try to make a push towards getting a, um, a title match against AJ Styles in the near future? The ugly had to have been, and I say this was an ugly because it was very hard for me to find something that actually, you know, kind of stood out to me in this match in that sort of a way. 
that vertical suplex that um that Dean put on the AJ and he released him and sent him like somersaulting onto that those two rows of chair into the ring. That was an innovation of violence at its finest. So overall, on the no gimmick scale, from a scale from one to five, I would have to say I would give this show a three on the uh, the no gimmick scale. My reason being. By far, you know, the SmackDown brand pay-per-views have really, really just outdone the Raw ones. I just have not seen enough from out the, uh, the Raw roster, especially with all the star power that they have, to really surpass what, um, what SmackDown has done. You know, with mostly, you know, mid-carters and some, some newer folks from the NXT roster have came up. But I can say this show here, although maybe possibly not as strong as, like, say, No Mercy or whatnot... It delivered in some ways. I really enjoyed the uh, the TLC match between Dean Ambrose and AJ Styles. Baron Corbin versus Callisto was a surprise. And it was a pleasant surprise to me. That match actually delivered, and I really enjoyed Dolph versus Miz. However, um, like I say, that second women's match really almost kind of began to you know turn into a snooze fest. It almost put me to sleep. Did not like Carmella versus Nikki one bit, and the Wyatts versus. Um, Versus the Beauty and the Man Beast could have been better, I think, if they would have just given it a little bit more time to develop. So, like I said, overall, 3 out of 5 on the No Gimmicks scale. Thank you for joining us for this edition of No Gimmicks Podcast. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel, like us on Facebook, and follow us on Twitter at the No Gimmicks PC. And also remember, sharing is caring. Please feel free to share our links with our pro wrestling fans and friends and family. Also, leave us some feedback. If you enjoyed this version of the podcast that we did... Or if not, leave us a like, leave us a dislike. But if you leave us a dislike, at least say why you did not enjoy the show down there in our comments section. So be on the lookout for our top matches in November coming up here uh, probably in about a day or so. This is Todd Smith out here in Bristol, Connecticut from my tag team partner, Dale Clifford, out there in Fernley, Nevada. Until next time around, y'all take care.